Hey, I'm JR, training manager here at Crutchfield, and in this video, we're going to talk about how to choose a car amplifier for your car. There's a lot of amps out there, all different sizes and shapes, different amounts of power, numbers of channels, speaker level inputs. There's so many things to consider about amplifiers. We're going to try to boil it all down to its simplest form so you can figure out which amp is right for you. One of the best ways to upgrade the sound in your car is to replace the radio, but that's getting harder. Cars are more complex with more features and integrated dashes that make that harder every day. So you can always get better sound by adding an amplifier and new speakers, and maybe a subwoofer. We have many amplifiers that are designed to do just that, to be easy to integrate with your factory radio. They'll have speaker level inputs, and there are even fancy interfaces that are designed to make the new amplifier work with the factory radio and the computer in your vehicle. Many new amplifiers feature a compact design, which allows you to put them in smaller nooks and crannies in your car, inside your dash, behind your radio, behind your glove compartment, under a seat, which is really nice because they pack a punch, they still have plenty of power for your speakers, yet they don't take up a lot of space and can be a lot easier to install. There are two ways to add amplifiers to a factory radio. Many amplifiers have speaker level input so that you can connect the factory radio speaker wires directly to the amp. The amp will take care of adjusting that signal so that it can then amplify it for your speakers. Or you can use a line output converter. That's a special box designed to take the factory speaker wire and convert the signal to a line level that your amplifier can work with. And there are smart line output converters that can analyze the music coming out of your factory radio and fix it. There's often EQ curves and processing in a factory radio designed to make those kind of inexpensive factory speakers sound a little bit better. And you don't want that in your new amplifier. You want a good, clean, flat response signal coming out of your radio, and so a good line output converter can fix those problems. One of the main considerations in choosing a new amplifier is getting one with the right number of channels. Uh, generally speaking, the number of channels should equal the number of speakers you're using. For example, if you are going to replace your four factory speakers with new ones and get an amplifier, you should probably get a four channel amplifier. Most subwoofers use a mono subwoofer amplifier, a one channel amplifier to power the subwoofer responsible for the bass. You can even get a five channel amplifier, which combines those two concepts, a four channel amp and a mono subwoofer amp in one chassis. That makes it a little bit easier to connect it to power and still have all the power you need. Two channel amplifiers are generally used when you're just replacing your front speakers and you simply need two channels of power to get that front sound stage to sound good, loud, and clear. If your amplifier has multiple channels, you can also bridge two channels together to power one speaker. For example, if you have a four channel amplifier, you could use the front two channels to power your front left and right speaker, and the back two channels could be bridged together to power a subwoofer. That would effectively make it a three channel amplifier. Of course, if you're using an amplifier with an aftermarket radio, that aftermarket radio will have preamp outputs designed specifically to get the right level of music into an amplifier. So you won't need a line output converter or speaker level inputs if you're using your amp with an aftermarket radio. Now that you know how many channels of amplifier power you need, it's time to determine how much power per channel your speakers will need. And in a small car, you don't need a ton of power. Uh, like a four channel amp with around 50 watts per channel should provide a lot of sound in a smaller, mid-size, compact car. If your car is a little bit bigger and has a lot more airspace to fill with sound, you're gonna want a little bit more power. 75 watts and up should be enough power to get good, clear, loud sound in a bigger car, even a large van or an SUV. When you look at amplifier power ratings, when you're looking at two channel amps and four channel amps, you'll see the power listed at four ohms. And that's because most of the speakers you put in your car, in your doors, in your dash, those are usually four ohm speakers. However, when you look at mono subwoofer amplifiers, the power will be rated at two ohms. And that's because that's kind of the sweet spot for subwoofers. When you hook up a sub to an amp, whether it's one or two, you kind of want to be at two ohms of impedance because that's where those amplifiers are designed to be their best. And when you're matching up your amplifier to your specific speakers, you should pick your speakers out first so that you can get the right amplifier to power the speakers you've chosen. And those speakers will have a power rating. Usually it's in a range of power. And the number you want to focus on is the maximum RMS power recommended by the manufacturer. And you don't want to go over that. So let's say you've chosen speakers that can handle a 100 watts of RMS power. You can choose an amplifier up to 100 watts of power. 
It doesn't have to be 100 watts, 75 watts, 50 watts. Any amount of power from an amplifier will make a big difference. The more power, the better. Now let's talk about getting an amplifier for your subwoofers. Most subwoofer amplifiers are one channel, mono subwoofer amplifiers, and they're designed to run subwoofers at around two ohms of impedance. That's important because you can use an amp like that to power a single sub or two subs. It's just how you wire them together that achieves that two ohm impedance. If you need any help with that, we have articles about that. And of course, our advisors here at Crutchfield can help you make sure to match the subwoofers to your amplifier. 2 ohm is the most common impedance to use with a subwoofer and a sub amplifier. You might see other combinations that you can use at 1 ohm or 4 ohms. Those are okay too, as long as your amp is capable of driving subs at that impedance. So how much power do you need for your sub? Let's talk about that. If you have a OEM stereo, a factory radio, and you're just adding a subwoofer to it, you don't need one with a ton of power. Anywhere from 50 to 200 watts of power for a subwoofer is probably adequate. If you've replaced your radio though, and your speakers now have a little bit more power than that factory radio, your sub might need a little bit more power to keep up. So anywhere from 200 to 300 watts is probably about right. If you've added an amplifier to power your new speakers, maybe an amplifier of around 50 watts per channel, your subwoofer is going to need somewhere between 250 and 500 watts of power to keep up with the rest of your speakers. And if you're really going crazy and you've added a 100 watt by 4 channel amplifier to power some really great speakers in your car, you're going to need like a 1000 watt subwoofer amplifier to really have enough bass for that system to sound nice and balanced. When you're choosing an amplifier for a subwoofer, what you should be looking at is the subwoofer's maximum RMS power as rated by the manufacturer, and you should strive to be within 75 to 100% of that power. For example, if your subwoofer can handle 400 watts of power, an amplifier of anywhere from 300 to 400 watts should be perfect. More power always sounds better. The bigger the woofer you're using, the more important it is to give it as much power as it can handle. When you're matching subwoofers to an amplifier, you're going to have to think about impedance. You don't really have to think about that much when you're powering your main speakers with a four channel amp, because those speakers are typically four ohms and everything just works out great. With a subwoofer though, you're going to see subwoofers that are two ohms, four ohms, dual voice coils with two ohms and four ohms, and it's important to get it right, to get the right number of subs at the right impedance so that you arrive at a two ohm impedance for the amplifier. For example, if you had two speakers that could handle 400 watts and they're four ohms each and you wire them in parallel, you would want an amplifier that can push out 800 watts at two ohms. That would be a perfect match. Again, this can actually be kind of confusing, so if you have questions on impedance and sub and amplifier matching, there is an article on our website about it and our advisors are fully trained to help you get it right. You may be wondering why some amps cost significantly more than other amps. And a big part of that is the quality of the power. There's amplifier classes like class A, B, and class D. The general difference there is that class Ds are smaller and more efficient and don't make as much heat. Class A, Bs though will typically be larger and the power will be a little bit beefier. Another difference is the level of control. Many amplifiers will have basic controls. Uh, when you install them, you adjust those controls and you're done. Other amplifiers have a lot more control. You'll see things like crossovers and bass boost and level controls. Uh, and some amps even have a complex digital signal processor built in that gives you immense control, usually using a computer or your smartphone or a tablet. Some of our amplifiers have Bluetooth as a way to get music into them directly from your phone without using a radio. This is great if you're using an amplifier to power speakers in a vehicle that doesn't have a radio, like an ATV or a golf cart, or maybe your classic car where you don't want to replace the factory radio. You can put an amplifier with Bluetooth under your seat, connect it to your phone, have total control from your phone, and you keep your dash looking cherry. So we get it, choosing an amplifier can be tough. There's a lot to think about. The number of channels, how much power, how many speakers, where's it gonna fit in your car? If you have questions about the right amplifier for your car, go ahead and put it in the comments. We do read those comments and we'll try to answer your questions right here on YouTube. And while you're at it, please like and subscribe and thanks for watching.